Hello everyone, welcome to the open day for the MSc in Data Science and AI for the Creative Industries. My name is Georgina Cadevilacano and I'm the Creative Learning Producer at CCI. And today we are here to share all about the MSc course. And in order to do that, we've got with us Louis McCallum, who's the course leader of the MSc, and two current students that uh, are at the course. Hadla, who's just graduating this year, and Ashvati, who just started the course a few months ago. To give you a little bit of an overview of how the session is structured, we're going to start a little bit talking about the CCI first, the spaces, the facilities, and resources which are available to students. Then we're going to share an overview of the social mission, the key research themes, and the public program of workshops and events at CCI. And lastly, Louis will talk us through the approach and content that the uh, MSc course entails. Right after that, we're gonna uh, jump straight into the Q&A section where I'm gonna invite Louis, Hadla and Ishvati to join us live so we can cover all the questions that we've received and that we hope to receive from you on the YouTube chat during the session. Throughout the session, we're gonna keep an eye on the chat and we'll do our best to cover everything that has been questioned and that has been shared with us. And hopefully that will give you an insightful uh, insight into what it's uh, the CCI like and what is this MSc like. Just know that there's a lot of content to cover during the Q&A section. So if you feel like uh, your question wasn't thoroughly answered and you would like some more and further details, about um, whatever you feel interested, interested or call to find out more about, please feel free to email us at CCI. We've got our email that will be shared on the chat as well, which is CCI at Arts AC UK. Also know something very important that if you have difficulties following along the session, please know that the entire session will be pre-recorded and it will be made available to you after the session so you can rewatch with English closed captions, which will be added right after the session. So you, can, you will have the opportunity to catch up with the content at your own pace as well. So let's get this started. We'll begin by watching a video that my, Chloe, uh, my colleague Chloe Dunn recorded, which will tell you all you need to know about the CCI spaces, facilities, and resources at the campus uh, of CCI. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll be back in a second. Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to show you around the campus and share some of the facilities and resources available to CCI students. The Creative Computing Institute is located at UAL's Peckham Road campus in Camberwell, South East London. From 2022, we'll have two new sites open in the Camberwell Peckham area. The Greencoat building opening in January will be used for teaching, technical and office spaces. Eagle Wharf will open in September and will provide a new halls of residence building for UAL students alongside a community outreach, events and exhibition space. Camberwell is a lively and unique area of South East London with good transport links to all parts of the city, including Brixton and Dalston. And we have three halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the CCI. The local area is home to a thriving art scene which hosts a variety of art galleries and artist studios that students, graduates and staff work and exhibit in. On site, we have two galleries, Camberwell Space and the Students' Union Gallery, with the South London Gallery right next door. Arts organisation Bull Tendencies runs an annual programme of live events and commissions, as well as hosting Frank's Bar on the Roof, with some of the best London views in the city. So here I've just named a few, but there are so many more galleries, cultural hubs and recreational spaces for you to explore that are right on our doorstep. To find out more about the local area, visit the Living in London page on the UAL website. On campus, we have many facilities and spaces for you to use. Our canteen has lots of food and drink options for everyone with bike storage situated just outside. We have an art shop, that offers affordable art supplies and whose staff can help advise you on the best materials for your projects. Also on site, we have an amazing library supported by a dedicated CCI librarian who oversees the subject area of creative computing. She ensures the library stays up to date with the books, periodicals, databases and other resources you need to complete your studies. The Learning Zone is part of the library and is situated on site in the Gardens Halls of Residence building. 
It's open 24 hours a day, meaning that you can study at a time that best suits you. And they have a range of equipment for you to use and laptops available to learn. To find out more about the spaces and facilities available to you, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now let's take a look around. The CCI is located across the fourth and fifth floors in Block B at Peckham Road and is very accessible to students with various needs. Our lecture theatre is in the basement of Block B. This space is used for lectures as well as events. The fourth floor is used mostly for postgraduate teaching. Here we have a new seminar room and a room which will house our laser cutter and some 3D printers too. The fifth floor is the heart of CCI. Our kitchen is a communal space as well as a learning space. At lunchtime, it becomes a social hub for CCI folks to share lunch together. And during classes, it's a quiet working space. We have pods which can be used when they are not booked as quiet spaces to work and a space to have your tutorials. Alongside are three classrooms, two seminar rooms and one high-end computer suite fitted with some of the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics cards and 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering and video editing. Additionally, many of these computers can be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering or machine learning work. We also operate a laptop locker system where students can borrow a laptop to use within the CCI spaces. The physical computing lab is a space for students to do all of their electronics. Here, we have everything students will need for soldering and testing things out. We have hundreds of different components which are available for you to use. There is also a sewing machine, embroidery machine, computerised knitting machine and 3D printers. This is just a glimpse of some of the amazing facilities and resources you'll have access to while studying at CCI. Hello again, I hope that was useful and insightful for you all. Now, a lot of students are interested as well in finding out more about the opportunities, workshops and events that they would have the chance to join when studying at CCI. Therefore, the next video I'm going to play that I recorded myself will give you an overview of uh, the CCI's public program, research themes and social mission. Enjoy. My name is Georgina Cardevilacano and I'm the creative learning producer at CCI and my role focuses on planning and delivering CCI's public program which I will briefly talk about in the next few minutes. Our public program is a platform that offers accessible learning experiences, workshops and events to literally anyone interested in getting a taste about creative competing or deepen their knowledge in the field. This program of activities is underpinned by CCI's three key research themes, which are creativity, machine learning and AI, human computer interaction and platforms, big data and digital citizenship. The public program also responds to CCI's social mission aimed at integrating computational thinking with approaches to fairness and equality for the UAL community and beyond. Therefore, all our programs have a strong focus on diversity in technology, digital inclusion and digital entrepreneurship. We are committed to connecting students, practitioners and researchers with an international community of artists and technologies and where everyone can explore creative technology through fun and friendly and most of all accessible spaces. To give you a sense of what you'll have the chance to take part in while you're studying at CCI, I will just share quickly some of the programs that we've run in the past. At Technology and Powers Intensive Workshop and Public Symposium last year, we learned about human rights, internet technology regulations, and alternative techno futures with Dr. Bixcraft and an amazing group of researchers, artists, activists, and advocates. At Tech for All conference, CCI staff members shared how we can creatively reimagine the way we use and design new technologies to create platforms, 
interactions, experiences, spaces, and products that bring people together in community, respect, beauty, and solidarity. At Querying Voice AI Intensive Course, a mix of UAL students explored how voice interfaces could be designed to support the embodied well-being of trans and non-binary people. And finally, they prototyped SIP, a voice interface that connects trans and non-binary users to media created by their community. And last but not least, at Tech Yard, we keep creating a safe space for young kids in the local area of Peckham and Camberwell to learn about creative computing with Jasmine Morris and many other CCI staff and students. These are just a few of the activities that we've been running over the last few years, but there's a lot of free, accessible, and interesting content in our YouTube channel, which I would love to invite you to check out at some point. For this next academic year, just so you have a taste as well of what's going on, we're working on a lot of different activities, which will include a couple of intensive workshops that will be open to all UAL and CCI students. We will also run a fellowship program on the field of experimental human-computer interaction. And there are many, many things that are on the way that we can't wait to share with you. As a CCI student, know that you will have the opportunity to be part of all these spaces and to meet other peers from across UAL and beyond. But this will be a safe space for you to explore your creative career, your creative practice alongside students coming from different courses, different levels and different programs that will for sure nurture your own views, your perspectives and your own skill set. So I hope that this got you excited about joining CCI and we can't wait to share spaces with you in the future. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye for now. Hello again. All right, now it's time to start talking about the MSc in Data Science and AI for the Creative Industries, which is the reason why we're all here today. And we will do so by watching a video that Louis McCallum, the course leader of the MSc, uh, kindly recorded for us today. So we'll watch it together. And right after that, we will welcome the students and Louis in the space, and we'll start our conversation and going through all the questions. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you in a second. Hello and welcome to the introdu this introduction video for the Creative Computing Institute Open Day 2020-2021. I don't know what we're calling it. Anyway, next year. Um, my name is Louis McCallum. Um, I'm the course leader for the MSc Data Science and AI for the Creative Industries. We're a new course this year. Um, so you'll be looking to come and join the second cohort, which is exciting. Um, I'm just going to do you a quick presentation now where I'll show you um, the kind of people we're taking onto the course and the kind of environment you'll be working in, the kind of things you'll be learning, and the kind of uh, stuff you hope will hopefully let you go on to be once you've learned some skills um, on this course. By the way, you'll see my face change color as I change slide because um, I've got some quite big block, bold colors um, and I'm in a dark room. So my lots of uh, uh, different uh, color effects to my skin as I change through, that's just me changing slides. Pink. Um, okay, so who are we taking onto the course? We offer BA in Arts and Humanities graduates the opportunity to re their studies in an applied STEM discipline in a creative industries context. What does that mean? Um, so basically what we're talking about here is it's a conversion masters. Although it's an MSc, um, and we'll teach you lots of technical stuff, we'll teach you maths, we'll teach you the statistics, we'll teach you the programming, we'll teach you the platforms. Um, everyone that we take on is going to come from um, BA in Arts Humanities graduates. Um, and I think this is the right way around to do it. Um, it's important with how much data science affects everyone in their lives um, and quite a, what kind of often happens now is we take people from tech backgrounds and like who've done years of computer science or maths and um, silicon valley types and then we go we're going to teach you a bit of ethics teach you to quickly think about stuff and um, you've kind of got to retrofit all these years of um, critically thinking that just comes naturally for us humanity students um, so that's kind of why this course exists. 
um, or one of the reasons anyway. So this year, what have we got? We've got people from art history backgrounds, people from fashion backgrounds, people from design backgrounds, people from normal art practice backgrounds, people from film backgrounds, people from the social sciences, um, older people, younger people. It's a real diverse group um, and they're all amazing. Um, so I can't wait for you to join them. Um, so yeah, that's who you're expecting, what you're gonna learn. Um, so we're gonna aim to give you um, opportunity to learn computer and data science skills. Um, so data science is pretty, as we said, ubiquitous and um, in, in it's being used in all industries to analyze data and um, provide insights, which then companies can act on. And um, so in the fashion industry um, or the music industry, it's also being used to generate loads of stuff in the creative industries. And um, so generative pictures, generative art, generative music, architecture, that kind of stuff, all kinds of crazy stuff. And it all sits on this background um, of be, um, being able to use computers and data science. And we're gonna teach you how to do that. Um, we don't expect you to have any programming skills when you come, although it just kind of help. Um, we do have people that have started this year with zero coding background. So we'll assume that as a minimum. We'll spend the first part building everybody up to the same level. Um, and then we'll move on from there into the, as things get more complicated. Um, so we really welcome a diverse range of backgrounds. All you've got to be is enthusiastic and um, more we reorient your skills. Um, so what's a data scientist? Uh, one part statistician, one part computer scientist, and <laughs> I've, only, I've only got two hands. Um, one part domain expert, which is three parts. Um, so we can teach you the stats, we can teach you the computer science. Um, you bring your domain expertise. You know things, you know stuff about the creative industries and that's valuable knowledge. Um, so we'll give you the practical skills um, to go in and go back to your industries and be able to analyze text and analyze fashion, and design new um, buildings based on, in architecture, based on data analysis, um, write new books based on literature, if that's your jam. Um, so you've got the domain skills, which is super valuable. Um, and we'll give you the stats and computer science skills to go out and make a difference. Um, so I'll just do you a quick overview of the course, what you learn, what the structure is. So it's a 45 week masters. We start in late September, early October. Um, there's three terms of learning, um, each with two courses each. So that's one shorter course and one big chunky course. We really get into a lot of detail. Um, so that's six things you'll really learn a lot of stuff about. Um, and then once you've built yourself up to be an amazing creative data scientist, you have the summer to do a thesis project um, to really get your teeth into something that you love, um, that's something you're passionate about, something you want to research more and um, to do a really good substantial piece of work. Okay, so I'll go through each of the courses then. Unit one, STEM for creatives. So this is a course we run in the first term. And um, it's kind of interesting to think of it as a kind of science, technology, maths boot camp. So as we say, we take people from a really wide variety of backgrounds. Um, so we use this course to get everyone up to the same level. Um, so we'll teach you about the maths that underpins a lot of the data science endeavors. We teach you some programming. Um, it's going to be mainly Python for those who are interested, because um, this is what is used in industry. Um, we mainly talk by me. Um, I'm from a kind of computer, creative computer science background, and um, I've worked in the creative industries as well. And um, we'll teach you how to work with audio, how to get information from audio, and um, so it can then put it into models and train models on it. How to get data from human interaction, so how to analyze videos, how to analyze sensor data, and um, how to work with images and all the maths that goes along with that. Um, so it'll just be an introduction that'll pull everyone up to the same level. Um, so everyone knows how to work with all these cool different mediums of data that are relevant to the creative industries. Um, so then when we move on, you're gonna have the real skills to work on it. Okay, we also run a natural language 
uh, processing course in the first term. Uh, so this is a real first look at taking a body of data and um, this, this, this time the medium is text and um, trying to pull some insights out of that um, using data analysis techniques. Um, so we'll look at stuff like text analysis, text generation. Um, so you've probably seen a lot of these um, big, um, large, largely trained um, data generation models generating really plausible sentences and like over um, long you know, stories which have beginnings, middles and ends, stuff that you wouldn't have really thought of a long time ago. Um, so we'll look at how these work, simpler methods for you know, chat, uh, how you build uh, Twitter bots that say funny things on the internet. Um, so um, how these fit into things like tech chat bots that are used to like industry, um, conversational in interfaces for things like Siri and Alexa, how they, those things fit together. Um, what you see here on the left, um, this lovely diagram is from uh, people at the pudding. They do loads of amazing data journalism. Um, the URL is just there, I suggest you check them out. Um, so they did this amazing piece where they looked at 100 years of literature and, and looked at how people talked about parts of the body and where the biases were between how people talked about men's bodies and women's bodies, the words they used and the parts of the bodies they talked about. Uh, and they use natural language processing to come through this big data set of loads of novels um, and come up with these really interesting insights and presented it in this beautiful way. Um, I'll just take it out. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll be looking here um, at how you can get um, nice, interesting insights from big sets of text data um, ready for as you move on to the next course um, after Christmas. We are your first introduction to data science and machine learning. Um, so we'll teach you the statistics that goes in behind this, um, how to build data sets, um, how to think about data sets. Where does your data come from? Um, well, I'm really going to push ethics throughout this course. So you, rather than critically just you know taking troves of data that's just generated from everything we do these days. Um, and then analyzing it and then using it to control stuff and to make decisions about our lives. Um, I'm really going to push people to think about where does the data come from? What was the complicity in this? What was the consent in this? Do people really know that their data was going to be used in this way. Um, how you know, was it taken in more way and then sold to other people? Um, and also how, how are the models used? Who benefits, who loses out, what are the power structures there? Um, and also, again, a lot of practical skills um, and how to do interesting things with data. And um, this image here, sorry, is a, a classic example of a classification problem. So you have two sets of labeled data and you want to try and identify whether it's one's one thing or another thing. In this case, um, what type of robot are you? Okay, so we'll also look at uh, how you can use artificial intelligence to generate and analyze media. Um, this is something which has come on leaps and bounds in the last five years, um, ever since the advent of deep learning. Um, so you'll have probably seen a lot of videos and images generated of people going, this face isn't real, but it looks real. This cat isn't real, but it looks real. Um, we'll look at how people can generate audio um, in raw audio and music um, in a symbolic form. Um, a lot of interesting stuff's come out of Google in the last five years or so from the Magenta Research Group. Um, we have quite a strong partnership with them. Um, so we'll see some interesting stuff in that thing. Um, you may have seen approaches such as uh, style transfer, where people take stylistic components of one set of videos or pictures, there's an overlay them to another. So I could be talking and you can make me look like an oil painting or like a, a Japanese painting um, or yeah, any other kind of style on top of that. Um, stuff with lip syncing and deep fakes. Um, we've seen a lot more um, again in recent years and I think this will continue to be a big thing. Um, so you can learn about those things. And a lot of these video processing things um, are making their way into commercial products. The most recent version of Adobe has all these video processing effects that are deep learning models under the background. Um, we'll also learn about um, yeah, GANs, you may have heard of these things. Um, 
things which generate faces and do weird stuff. Um, so that's going to be an exciting course. We have lots of world leading researchers working on, on these kind of things at the CCI, how to analyze and generate new media with applications in music, architecture, fashion, um, general art practice design, loads of stuff. Okay, so then after we've um, built up our skills by the time we get to term three, um, we'll have quite a industry focused course where we'll look at case studies and uh, how we can use these things in the data, uh, our data science skills in the creative industries. I've just pulled this thing from I think government website, um, identifying the creative industries, which is a massive sector in the UK. Uh, advertising as identified by Mr. Bean, of course, architecture, arts and culture, craft, design, fashion, games, music, publishing, TV and film as represented by an orange block. Um, and we've also got the stock photo of someone doing VR, which of course is standard. Um, so we've got lots of media, um, we've got lots of industry contacts. Uh, we'll help you and we'll get them integrated in this course to really um, give you a good insight into how the skills are used in the creative industries. Uh, and then finally, we'll be looking at how uh, companies in the creative industry um, use machine learning to analyze what their um, customer is doing, how they're consuming things, and then use that to personalize interfaces and then push recommendations back. So places like Spotify, Netflix, when they you know, you finish watching a film, they recommend you something else. Um, Amazon, all of these things. It's not just how do you um, take all of this data that they collect from people and get interesting insights from it, but also how do you then take these insights and then update the experience that users have um, in order to change the outcomes and the experiences that they're having and the things that they're buying. Um, you look at, say, um, there's a guy called Francois Pache at Spotify um, who looks at generating music. Not only does he know all of the songs that people listen to, he knows what parts of the songs they stop at, what parts they skip. He uses that information to then generate new songs. Um, so you can really get into this really fine grained detail, um, which is then passed on to further uh, generate new content or change users' experiences. And that's what we'll learn about in Unit 6. Uh, and then we'll move on to the research section. At the CCI, um, we don't just have amazing teaching and courses. We've got tons of world leading research happening among the faculty themselves and um, in stuff like media generation, uh, human focused machine learning, uh, game design, and um, general media performance stuff. Um, there's also a bunch of PhD students doing really interesting research more of an early stage. And um, so there's a real bustling research community. So when you're here and you're at the CCI, you'll be able to interact with these people, see the work that they're doing, be around opportunities for collaboration and inspiration. They hold weekly meetings on Wednesday. You can just go in, stick your nose in um, and just see what else is going on in here. Hopefully that'll give you inspiration for moving in on all of your other talk courses that you do. Um, the Creative in Computing Institute itself, obviously you know something about it um, since you're here for the open day. People sometimes say that these, they wish these things had been around when they're young. Like I wish the school had been like this when I was a kid or I wish, the, I wish these courses had been available when I was a student. Um, which is true for this. I really wish it was. Um, but it doesn't really quite make sense here. Um, that's just because like the leaps and bounds of come on in interdisciplinary research in the last, I don't know, 15 years to where we are now to becoming this really accepted thing that you could have an MSc computer you know, data science program being taught within an art school. Um, that kind of thing is um, so valuable and so relevant um, with the kind of uh, the ubiquitousness of technology um, into all forms of life and works and stuff. Um, yeah, something like this just couldn't have accepted for, and the people that are really on the forefront of pushing these interdisciplinary approaches to research, loads of them actually work at the CCI now, um, and it's a real bastion of that. 
and a real kind of shining light of what's possible when you combine um, different approaches from different um, academic backgrounds and practical skill learning um, to really make amazing academics um, and students um, to go and do really cool things so that can be you. Um, also, just in general, the technology, um, a lot of the stuff that we look at, the fact that you can do it at all, the fact that you can do it to the quality you can, the fact that you can do it on your own computer, the fact that you can run a lot of this stuff in browsers is insane. Like, it blows my mind. Um, stuff that like five years ago would have been unthinkable. So again, there's a real chance for these technologies to be integrated into industries, into context, and just, um, it just wasn't at all possible. So it's a really exciting time for this course to exist. So like I say, yeah, I wish this would have been around when I was a kid, but it definitely couldn't have been when I was a student. It's a real, uh, it's a real course of our time. Um, and hopefully it will give you the skills to go out and have an effect on um, the upcoming world. Um, we often have a lot of uh, guest lectures coming in. So there's a focus on uh, yeah, working with people from industry. We had someone from Cambridge the other day speaking, someone from BBC R&D coming in next week. Um, got someone who works with uh, analysing chatbots for disinformation who does work with the UN coming in at the end of the term. So we've got a lot of amazing voices at the CCI and we also bring in loads of external industry ones to contribute to that as well. Um, we want you to get jobs. And this may seem like a, an obvious point and we'll take it at like the base value. We're going to teach you the skills that you need to get jobs, the skills that you need to work with the state of the art technologies and the jobs in the industry that are out there, um, the programming skills, the math skills, the knowledge. Um, but we also want to get you jobs because then you'll be working in these places. Um, this data is being generated at a massive level. Um, it's super important that the people that are working in these companies um, have the kind of wherewithal and the critical thinking uh, and the ethical thinking to really make decisions about what's done with data, what's done with data, what's done with models. Um, should we be doing these things? How do we do them right? Um, so we take you, you come with your arts and your humanities backgrounds. You're always, you're, you've had years of training to think critically and properly about stuff. Um, we give you the data science skills that you can go into these companies, really make sure that what they're doing is done right. And that's important. Um, yeah, also, if you want a quick, just like primer about what we're doing, um, me, Rebecca Freebrink, and Mick Grayson, all at the CCI, have an online course at Future Learn called Applied Creative Machine Learning. Um, requires no programming, um, all in JavaScript, all into the browser. Um, and if you want a quick insight into the kind of fun stuff, you might be able to do a quite simple level with um, machine learning in your creative practice. Check it out. Hello again. Thank you so much, Louis, for this super insightful video. Now it's time for real chat here. So I'm going to invite Louis Hadlaj Bhatti to this virtual space and we will have around 30 minutes to answer the questions we received on the chat and also the ones that we collected from the form on the sign up um, um, page that we had. So yeah, feel free to send us any other question or comments on the YouTube chat so we can talk about it. So there we go. I'm going to invite Louis in, Hadla and Hajwati. Hi, everyone. You can unmute yourself and say hi if you want to. Hello. Hi, Louis. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. It's super, super valuable, as we said, to, to have you here and um, being able to hear from your own experience at the course as well. So it's really, really appreciated. All right, so we've got quite a lot to go through. So we will uh, just start with the first one, uh, which I think will go for Louis this time. It says, is this real computer science? Yeah, I, I think when we say this, can we, can we do our quotes for this? Like, I, I, 
I, I always feel the, the the term the real should should always come at that quote. Um, <laughs> so I guess it, it's very, very much like assumes um, some kind of pre, pre, predefined uh, notion of like what real, what the real and real computer science is. Um, I mean, it's an MSc, so you'll come, you will come out of it with a, a qualification which is recognised as a, as a, um, as a kind of science uh, qualification. And um, so, if that's important to you, and it, maybe it's important to employees. Um, that's something that you'll get out of it. Um, we teach a lot of programming, um, which uh, I guess is the component of, of some computer science programs. Um, and as I think maybe when we get into the detail a bit more about kind of what exactly data science um, entails, um, people often try and uh, demonstrate the kind of intersection of it in a kind of Venn diagram. And computer science is definitely like one of those circles. Um, but um, I don't know. We, we we have a whole year to teach to kind of go from not uh, from from people who don't necessarily have a, this as much in their background. Um, we want to teach a lot of applied stuff as well. Um, so I think f for me, it's more it's more interesting that people are able to do stuff um, in the kind of application areas in the creative industry rather than necessarily a lot of the other um, kind of engineering skills you might have got um, with a like more traditional computer science stuff. Um, we teach we we teach a lot of technical stuff, um, but it's mainly about how you can actually use it in a to actually get something done in a creative field, rather than necessarily like some of the more like software engineering skills that you might need um, in the computer science degree. That's amazing. Thank you, Louis. We've got the next one, which is something that we get quite a lot as well. So, what is a data scientist exactly? Um, so, I guess uh, I kind of always. When we, when we think about what a data scientist is, um, I kind of like to think like if you're if you're a company and you're hiring a data scientist, like what what you expect, what are you going to be expected to do if someone hires you to do this job? And um, so you kind of work backwards from there. It's quite nice. Um, and in general, basically, I think a lot of these companies now have way like all almost all companies, not just necessarily tech companies, um, end up with a lot of data. Um, and there are various kind of parts within that, um, within the institution, um, where they would want to know what to do with that data. Um, and kind of data science just tend to, tend to sit across this. Um, I think in general, um, especially now because it's become so widespread, there's quite a lot of roles, even kind of like under the data scientist umbrella, like. Um, if you wanted to get more into like the engineering side of it, you might be looking at like um, how people collect data, how they store data, um, how they keep models that they've trained on this data, like interacting with like real world systems, um, or it might be a more kind of um, kind of analysis role. And um, I guess in general, uh, it's kind of this Venn diagram of people that have maybe some domain knowledge. Um, for how this how the data is actually being used, um, a lot of maths and statistics, um, and then yeah, maybe a bit of computer science as well. Um, so like a few of the roles that might get kind of subsumed under data science um, these days. I think there's a really nice book um, called Getting Started in Data Science by Ayodele Adibayla, um, which came out about six months ago. So if you if you want like a, a kind of up to date look on what type of roles might exist within there. Um, she covers data analyst, data scientist, data engineer, um, machine learning engineer, visualization developer, research scientist, statistician. So all of these ones kind of would sit within probably data science. Um, and depending on whether you're more interested in like the storytelling that comes with data, or maybe the kind of yeah, upkeeping the systems which kind of underlie the use of this um, there's going to be lots of different roles um, and you'll learn a lot of these skills that you can kind of specialize in afterwards. Lovely. Thank you, Louis. So on to the next one, we've got a very, um, yeah, something that we really get a lot as well. So everyone comes from a different background here. So how will this MSc help me reorient my career into creative um, STEM? So I guess here, Lou, you could tackle this first, but it would be lovely to hear from Hadlein Ashvati if they want to share as well um, a little bit about their own experience and how they found it uh, just coming into this new field, let's say. 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think a lot, a lot of people, I guess there, there are a lot of jobs out there. Um, and whilst, um, so I think a lot of the coding skills, um, even if you don't necessarily stick within data science, a lot of the coding skills are going to be useful and the kind of basic maths. Um, also research schools, um, my background and a lot of the background people at CCI is in not just kind of like teaching and stuff, but also in research. So I kind of like to teach it from a very much uh, a fo kind of a focus of if you have a question or some insight that you want to find out, how can you use, how can you kind of frame that question in a way that we're able to answer it in a kind of scientific way um, or with data? Um, so I think that skill in itself is just that way that you kind of go through that process um, is super useful. Thank you, Lou. Would you like to share something on that front? Um, Hello, Rajvati, if you feel like it. Uh, I mean, should I go first? That'd be great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, so, I mean, I have like zero programming background. I did my undergrad in business and I worked in UX design. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of like, um, yeah, like kind of reorient my career into um, creative stuff because I really enjoyed my time working in like the UX design field. Um, and given that it's like slightly connected, um, like Etsy has a slightly connected, that's how I was kind of curious. Um, to explore the side again it's just been two months since i've started the course i don't really i can't really say more about like um the program uh but so far we've we've covered like python uh, uh in the stem for creative module and we're done with nlp which was quite interesting um most of us like we've come up with like classification projects or like um dialogue systems like chatbots and stuff so yeah Thank you so much for sharing. Would you like to add something there, Hadla, as well? Yeah. Um, well, my background is in uh, design, arts and culture, and in advertising. Um, um, I've been a graphic designer for 20 years. And, uh, well, the main reason why I um, started this course was I wanted to add um, uh, you know, to my skills, I, I, I'm really interested in in technology and AI, uh, especially. And uh, it's just I've noticed that it's been coming like um, a big part of the creative industries today. Uh, so, um, and I was also looking for ways. I mean, not just learning to code or to program, but to actually apply it in a responsible way and uh, and yeah like know where to apply it and maybe where not and so um yeah um just finished this course um one month ago <laughs> so yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well done, Hadla. Amazing. Thanks so much for sharing. Since we're talking a little bit about backgrounds here, I thought we could um, show this question that we received on the chat, which says, my degree is in electronics and communications engineering uh, with some coding experience after graduation. I've been a full-time musician for a few years now. Am I eligible for this course? This one's for you, Louis. Um, I'm going to say quite quickly, yes, that sounds like a great background. Um, yeah, we cover um, but my background is a lot of music um, and audio stuff. Um, I cover a lot of this, um, these things. Um, so definitely your experience as a creative and also as a kind of engineer will be super useful. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting stuff. Amazing. Lovely. So moving on, we've got a few more here to cover. So another one says, is this course a good option for someone who wants a master's in data sciences with a creative focus? That's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I, I would also say, um, yeah, this is a, that's exactly our Venn diagram, that's our intersection. <laughs> Lovely. All right. This is something that as well we get a lot. So what is the difference between data science at CCI and elsewhere? What makes this MSc in data science and AI for the creative industries at CCI so unique? Uh, yeah, so I guess the, the main focus of this is going to be the application area. Um, 
So I guess if you're doing uh, data science or um, potentially AI courses elsewhere, um, there might be more of a um, maybe business focus or, or maybe slightly more abstract focus. Um, here, very much whenever we teach and stuff, um, although there is a bit of theory to, to do it, I also I always try and put it within the context of kind of a useful thing that you can do. And that useful thing is as much as possible within the creative industry. So um, whereas you might learn about the uh, like a particular type of model for like predicting house prices in California or something on like a traditional machine learning course. Um, here you might learn about it in the context of um, maybe like uh, controlling like a performance system um, with a dance or something. Um, so I guess there's that kind of practical um, area. Um, and also just in general, um, I think this is becoming more prevalent. It's not necessarily unique to CCI, um, but right from its very core, CCI has a pretty strong commitment um, to teaching stuff um, about fairness um, and to like a critical approach to AI. So um, with F, like, there's a lot of stuff which gets taught, um, which um, we question potentially whether it's a good use of it or not. And I guess uh, Hadley kind of brought that a little bit as well, which was nice to hear. Um, so I think, yeah, it's a, it's nice to be situated within um, a place where this is kind of, that's the kind of the default rather than like an exception. Fab, thanks, Louis. Lovely. So moving on, we've got a few uh, comments about the process of applying to the course. So we're going to start with this one, which is quite common as well. What are the technical requirements to apply? And with that, maybe we can also tie it the next one. Do we need a creative or STEM background to apply? That is uh, yeah, something that it would be amazing we could cover together. What are your thoughts, Louis? Um... So I think in terms of technical requirements officially, um, I think the uh, I think all that they actually officially ask for in the application process is a, a kind of a willingness to uh, maybe an aptitude for um, like maths and computational ideas. Um, but apart from that, um, I think we're pretty open to accepting um, people. You kind of just need it enthusiasm for the subject and um, the application uh, procedure doesn't involve a portfolio but involves a, a kind of written statement and then that's kind of what you would judge what we would judge it on basically um, if you can if in the written statement it looks like you we feel like you're um, you're kind of interested and enthusiastic in the course and um, then I think that uh, we're quite happy to kind of let people come and like pick up the skills here that's great, Louis. Thank you. So that really ties very nicely with the next one, which is how does the application process work? Could you maybe like just clarify how the process works and what our prospective students ask to, to submit to become part of the course? Uh, yeah, so there is two deadlines. Um, so we have a, there's a finite number of spaces on the course. Um, but basically we keep we do multiple rounds um, and we kind of keep it open rollingly um, after that and um, so i guess the advantages of applying early are on the uh, if we do end up reaching our quota then um, we will hit point and um, where we stop taking applications the first deadline is in january the 12th or, yeah. yep um so that's yeah, in just over a month's time and then we have a second deadline for a second round of applicants on the 13th of april um, if we still have spaces after this, we will still keep um, taking applications. Um, although, yeah, the advantage of getting yourself uh, applied early is to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, like we said, there's no portfolio. Um, if um, you, if English isn't your first language, you may be asked to um, provide um, a, a certain score on it on a on an English test and. Um, because the, the language, the course is taught in English. Um, you'll need a CV and a personal statement, um, but that's it, basically. That's great, thanks, Louis. 
Awesome. So the next one is about the type of work that students will get to produce during the MSc. And I guess here we have like an amazing opportunity for Hadla maybe to share a little bit about <laughs> the projects and the work that you've um, developed during the course. But maybe if you want to add something at the beginning, Louis, feel free to do so as well. Do you want to start? Do you, do you want me to start? Well, we did lots of work. So um, lots of work in relation to data science, um, data science projects. Um, um, NLP, natural language processing. Um, uh, we did, um, I did sentiment analysis um, on tweets. Um, we worked with GAN um, and we, uh, we worked with mapping gestures to um, actions, so interactive design a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and Louis, I really liked the you know introduction that you made um, with the, uh, how do you say it, um, machine learning, uh, the machine learning part for, for media. Uh, uh, you know, when you change the, <laughs> when you use scan and, and yeah. So we, we do a lot of work like that. And also um, we got a chance to uh, develop ideas in relation to personalization of the gov.uk uh, uh, websites and uh, pitch it to them as well. Um, and then it's the final project, which is um, a really good opportunity to just figure out what you are passionate about. We have, uh, I think, three or four months to uh, research and uh, and really go deep into um, our interest and and um, yeah. So yeah, a lot of things to put in your portfolio, basically. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Amazing. Thank you, Hadla, for sharing. That was lovely. So on that front as well, um, it would be great to tackle this comment that we received from Omar that says, what is the main programming language and software that's used at the course? It would be great to tackle that as well. Uh, yeah, so basically we teach Python. Um, since most people uh, don't have a background in programming, it's, it seems to uh, be sensible just to keep it just as one. So Python, um, is used in industry for, I mean, definitely for a lot of machine learning tasks um, and then for data science as well. Some other kind of statistics softwares are often, are sometimes used, maybe like R, um, but definitely Python is a nice one that basically covers all of the bases, good for like signal processing, kind of more like underlying, like working with media, working with audio, working with images stuff, um, right through to like more kind of, um, kind of cursory um, statistics um, in, um, in more kind of traditional data science tasks. Um, and then also interacting with the web. So like people build web servers in Python and you can pull information from the from the web in Python. You can work with databases in Python. Um, so yeah, we normally um, start you off um, working in notebooks broadly um, for most of the work. Amazing, thank you, Louis. Lovely. So the next one we've got here, let me just put it on the screen, is one that is quite important as well. And we've received already a few comments about that on the chat. Is working and or parenting uh, possible during your studies? I would like to go <laughs> with this one. So at the moment, we, we only have full-time uh, modes of the MSc. That's important to note, but I know that there's like some like projects there to really find, uh, try and find a way to, to offer these um, in different modes. But at the moment, the ones that we have uh, at the MSc level are all full-time. So I thought it was uh, good to just clarify that first. But maybe, Hadla, you can sh just share a little bit about your experience this, um, this year at the course and how you found it. Do you feel like it? Um, well, I'm a parent, um, so I can re um, relate to that. Um, I'm a parent of a two-year-old. Uh, she was one when I started. And um, 
well, um, I received a lot of support from my tutors and staff. So yeah, I would definitely say that you can work or, or parent, you know, while doing full-time masters. But you know, if you think about it, if you're honest, if you need to work while doing a full-time masters, you have a really good reason for it. So um, I think everybody here understands it. Um, it's going to be a lot difficult, but um, I, I would advise you to ask for help. And yeah, so it's possible, definitely. Thank you, Hadla, for sharing. Amazing. And we've got so many other questions, but um, I would like now to give a chance to Ishvati to share a little bit about her experience as well there. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you would like to share on that front, Ashvati? Uh, well? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess yeah, with booking, it's definitely a bit tough, but it's not entirely hard. So the course requires you to study, like independent study for at least 16 hours. Um, so you definitely can't do like, 20 hours of work a week or maybe you can I don't know depends on how you are like um, but a lot of people on the course currently are doing part-time jobs um, for about like five to six hours and are managing to like um, get through the coursework and stuff so it really depends on like how you are like and stuff but again if it's like super necessary for you to work um, like at least 20 hours and stuff from my personal experience I would say it's hard because the course does require you to um, you know, especially like the first few months, because everything is just so new, um, uh, you might have to like focus more on like, um, yeah, just getting the basics properly covered. But um, yeah, I would say it's definitely possible to work about that. Thank you both for sharing. Is there anything you would like to add there, Lou, as well? Uh, yeah, I think I, it's, been, it's been mainly covered. Um, there is about 11 hours of contact time a week um, currently. Um, so that's two sessions on school campus and one online session per week. Um, beyond that, yeah, there's a, a lot of independent learning to be expected as well, um, as with any master's program. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's probably, yeah, I guess it's, 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 it's up to you. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm totally happy to be flexible. Um, I understand, especially with um, older people um, who are doing, you know, especially for conversion masters, if you're kind of already like along in your career, you can't just like stop and um, pick up new things. So I'm definitely sympathetic to that. Um, and all our, even our live, rec I'd recommend people come, <laughs> but um, all of our live lectures are recorded. So if you do per chance happen to miss something, um, it does exist for you to catch up on. That's great, thanks, Louis. Seems Hadla mentioned there like a keyword, which is like support. I feel like it would be relevant before we finish the session to talk a little bit about the sort of like teaching and technical resources and support that are available to CCI students. I know Ashvati that you were like keen to share a little bit of like the resources that you found very useful so far in the course. So it would be great to hear from you. Um, yeah, um, so all UL students have access to, um, like free access to LinkedIn Learning. We also can do a free Coursera course. Given that most of the topics that we're covering uh, in the first few months are like completely new uh, for everyone, uh, I found it really helpful, um, uh, especially like LinkedIn Learning. You can also, um, if your project that you're kind of producing, um, if you require like to use the Camber well workshops, like Ceramics of Three workshops. If it is aligning with your project, you can get that approved through your course leader and access those facilities as well, which is quite interesting. Um, and lastly, I think, uh, speaking of support, I would also like to mention that, yeah, the disability service, um, a lot of, um, I think there are like a couple of students in the current batch as well who are registered on it. And, um, yeah it's uh, most most universities talk about like accessibility but it's not really um as accessible but given the fact that like all of our lectures are recorded you can 
um, watch it again at your own pace. You have a dedicated sort of like advisor who will be constantly meeting you and checking up on you. You'll have like um, support mentors as well, depending on what sort of visibility you have. Um, and yeah, like communication wise as well, it's 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 really nice. So if you are disabled and you're worried about um, any access needs, I would like 100% say um, CCI is like an amazing place and they do understand um, like different needs and stuff. That was lovely to hear. Thanks so much Ajwati for sharing. Is there anything you would like to add on that front, Hadl as well? No, nothing that I, I want to add, thank you. Thank you so much. Lovely. So there's so many other questions that we didn't have the time to cover this time. So I think we'll just um, have to say that we've made it to the end of the event. Um, if there are any questions that uh, you submitted on the form that we haven't been able to cover, please, please email us at cci at airarts.ac.uk and we'll do our best to get back to you um after the event uh again you know the inbox is always open for any queries or comments or suggestions that that you have for us so we're all ears on that front and yeah we've done our best here to cover so much but there's only yeah there's only much we can do in an hour so i uh, just wanted to say a huge thanks for to louis hadla and Esvati for sharing us sharing with us today this space and for making time to share your experience here we look forward to meeting you in the next academic year, hopefully. And yeah, feel free to email us uh, any questions or doubts in the future. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.